so we were talking about uh, uh, semi-conservative mode of DNA replication, uh, how it occurs in, in VCF, our eukaryotic system. Uh, the VCF have been used as a as a as a tool for proving that some DNA replication is semi-conservative in eukaryotic system also. Uh, mm, so uh, just have a recapitulation for for a minute. So VCF have plants were first grown in uh, in a media containing treated thymidine for eight hours, less than a generation, uh, and then the the roots were root tips were dissected, washed, and grown in non-radioactive media further. Uh, when when they were um, subjected to treated thymidine, the the chromosomes were non-radioactive initially. So this is say this is one chromosome containing two the double stranded DNA molecule. Both of them are non-radioactive. When they were treated with treated thymidine, uh, the new DNA that was synthesized is white color DNA. It incorporates uh, radioactivity using using the yellow color DNA as a template. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it was subjected to autoradiogram, the result was like this, proving that both the chromatids are radio level in fact. Uh, but it was not clear whether both the DNA were radio level or, or only the one DNA was radio level. So uh, further, the root tips were dissected and washed uh, and, and were treated with colchicine um, uh, for, uh, for understanding for, for metaphysic uh, distribution uh, so that the, the chromosomes could be studied uh, in a proper way. Uh, after this uh, eight hours of treatment, and this is the metaphasic chromosome, this gets separated during anaphase and telophase into two chromatids, uh, like this. So these two chromatids will get separated like this. I have a color problem. I think uh, this is not uh, this is not exactly yellow, but you can understand the colored one is this one. And the whiter one is this one. So it is not exactly white again. Okay. So these two chromatids uh, they get separated during during an appearance. One moves to one pole, the other moves to the other pole. Uh, and in the next cell division, again they will enter G1 phase and then S phase, synthesis phase, G2 phase, and in the meta phase. In uh, this chromosome, will also move, move into the same uh, phases, and finally they will give. A, um, they will again uh, in the S phase they will replicate. In the meta phase, it will become clear that uh, what is the condition. Since the environment is non-radioactive now, uh, it is expected if the uh, uh, replication is semi-conservative, then it is expected that one of the chromatids uh, in this uh, metaphasic stage. Uh, is non-radioactive, whereas the other chromatid is radioactive. If if the replication had been semi-conservative, that has to happen, and the result was uh, up to the expectation that um, the yellow yellow strand that was non-radioactive strand uh, that will pro produce a non-radioactive DNA that will act as a template, and the new daughter DNA that will be synthesized will also be a non-radioactive one. That is the yellow one. Whereas the white, uh, whiter DNA, this one, that will act as a template again and will synthesize a new DNA which will be yellow because yellow color represents a non radioactive. Sorry. Let me do this. So the, mm, the new DNA that will be synthesized will be non radioactive represented by yellow colored strand. So if you subject it to autoradiogram, the result will give you a picture like this. Uh, since this part of the chromatid is radioactive and will emit beta particles, so only this half will be, will be, uh, will show black colored spots in the extra film. Uh, whereas in this case, the opposite will be true. The white DNA, the, the white DNA, then and that 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 incorporates radioactivity will bring a yellow color dna which is non radioactive dna because the environment is non radioactive now and the yellow colored strand in the chromatid will bring again a yellow color dna because the environment is non radioactive again so this this will produce a, a, an autoradiogram 
uh, like this. This part of the DNA chromatid will be radioactive, the other half will be non-radioactive. This proves that the DNA replication is semi-conservative in, in eukaryotic system also. Now, uh, coming to the process of DNA replication. Uh, before going to the process, let us uh, first understand the enzymes that are involved. Uh, DNA replication occurs uh, with the help of uh, enzyme called DNA dependent DNA dependent DNA polymerase. In prokaryotes, there are three DNA polymerases: DNA pol. 1, 2, and 3. Of these, uh, DNA pol 1 and 3 are involved in DNA replication, whereas DNA pol 2 uh, is involved in DNA repair. As far as the functions of these um, enzymes are concerned, uh, um, pol 1, all of them have a 5 prime to 3 prime polymerase activity. This is with all of them, but um, 5 prime to 3 prime exo activity. This is only present with the with the pol one, and this is absent in these two enzymes. Whereas 3 prime to 5 prime exo activity, which is also called proofreading activity, is present in all of them, because the incorrect DNA cannot be synthesized anywhere, whether it is DNA repair or or DNA replication. So, um, this is the characteristic of this TM Pol 1, Pol 2, and Pol 3, three enzymes in, in prokaryotic system. Uh, in eukaryotes, the enzymes are designated as alpha, beta, gamma, epsilon, uh, and, and tau, probably. Tau is uh, written how? Tau. I forgot the symbol tau. Probably this one. So, there are five uh, enzymes in eukaryotes, which is uh, the system is a little bit more complicated than the prokaryotes. Uh, let us understand first in prokaryotic system how it works. Uh, first of all, we must un must remember that uh, DNA replication occurs in 5 prime to 3 prime direction. And this will help us understand why uh, the, the two double stand the double standard DNA, which is anti parallel, uh, why there is a problem of. Um, synthesis in one of the strand whereas the other strand synthesizes the continuous DNA. So DNA replication has three phases, uh, um, initiation, elongation and termination. Initiation. Initiation occurs at a particular site called orisite, origin of replication, also called orisc. This is in prokaryotic system in the in the chromosome. There is a position in the chromosome. Said this is the chromosome. Here is the orisite, about 146 base pair long. It contains. Uh, if you we elaborate it like in this diagram, we will see that this orisc contains three. 13 more regions that are AT rich. These three 13 more regions are AT rich. Means it contains more amount of AT. AT will help us uh, help uh, in, in in melting the DNA easily. So this is AT rich. The uh, and there are four and there are four uh, nine more regions. Some books it has been given five such regions of the nine more regions. So there are four nine more regions. This entire area is called origin of replication or you see. Uh, and a number of enzy uh, enzymes uh, designated as DNA A, DNA B, DNA C, uh, HU protein, integrated host factor and also ATP hydrolysis uh, is associated with with the uh, with the initiation or initiation of replication how does it occur uh, this dna a protein first binds with the nine more region and the nine more region due to dna dna interaction is folded like this 
the DNA becomes folded like this because of the association of DNA A protein with the Nynmar region and their interaction with each other among them. And this is the uh, this area is a 13 mar region area, AT rich area. So um, with this region, the DNA A protein binds, and they interact with each other, bringing the, this DNA DNA um, parts closer to each other. That is folding the DNA. And uh, mm, then it is followed by bind association of HU protein also. So this is DNA A protein. This is HU protein. And in the meantime, hydrolysis of ATP occurs. So ATP is hydrolyzed to ADP plus PI, giving some energy, which helps to melt this part of the DNA. It's 13 mar region. So 13 mar region gets melted like this. And this is the, these are the regions, uh, nine more regions. And uh, this is the protein, DNA A protein. They are associated like this and this is a uh, uh, HU protein. Now, 13 more region, it has melted. It will be bound by uh, DNA B protein, which is a hexamer like this. Uh, it is basically a helicase, so it will open the helix. This binding will occur on both directions, both the forks, and um, and the single-stranded region, single-stranded DNA will also be bound by some proteins called SSB, single-strand binding protein. These proteins help to stabilize the single-stranded DNA so that they do not rehabilitize again. This DNA B is basically helicase. And association of um, assembly of DNA B uh, as a helicase in, in, in the uh, open complex takes place with the help of DNA C. DNA C protein helps to assemble DNA B protein on this position. And uh, when this has occurred, it can be said that the initiation is over. And now a primase, uh, an enzyme called primo primase, will come and sit here at this position on both the sides. And will synthesize primers. This we will see in, in, in the next uh, video. Uh, or we may proceed a little bit further. That after this initiation, you can see this is called replication bubble. This is replication bubble. This this is replication bubble. This entire area. So uh, in, in elongation phase, we will see only the half of the replication bubble that is being shown as a as a fork like this. Uh, so this is the fork half of the replication bubble. So this is five prime end. This is three prime end. So this is three prime end. This is five prime end. So uh, uh, DNA replication uh, starts uh, from five prime. To it occurs in five prime to three prime direction. And it is also true that DNA polymerases uh, they cannot synthesize de novo. They always require a primer to start with. And the primer is basically an RNA primer. So this is say this is a primer, which has a five prime end on this side, three prime end on this side, and for this DNA here is the primer, uh, which has a five prime on this side, three prime on this side, and the synthesis will occur in this direction, in this case in this direction, but uh, after after a certain period of time, when the helicase helicase is sitting here, the helicase will open the DNA a little bit more. Then what will happen? A gap will be created. Uh, this this was the primer with which this synthesis was going on. This DNA will always get a three prime end to continue, but this primer it has synthesized only this part of the DNA, and this new gap that is created will be synthesized with the help of another primer. So the synthesis in this strand will be discontinuous, and uh, and the DNA that will be synthesized in a, in a fragmented way. These fragments are called Okazaki fragments. And the, this DNA is called, therefore, called leading strand. And this one is called lagging strand. 